Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to another update by RRG Research. This report is for Monday the 12th of June. I'm recording it on Friday the 9th of June. My name is Trevor Neal from RRG Research and I'm coming to you today from London. Let us start, as we always do, looking at the global stock indices. Now here, I think there's some changes taking place. We've had consistent themes, persistent themes going on for some time now. So that seems to be changing a little bit. And we'll also look at the foreign exchange market. And it may be that the dollar is topping out. And if this is so, where best to capitalise on any move from that? We will start by looking at the major global indices versus cash okay so being right of the vertical 100 level here so it shows relative uptrend in the market and poor uptrends on the left hand side so it's not versus the msci world so it's not versus an average of all the stock markets it's actually the stock markets per se so stock markets are doing well apart from the russell 2000 and the hang Seng, which is going absolutely in the wrong direction We've still got in the lead the Nasdaq and still pointing in the right direction here. Nikkei strong because of the essentially because of the currency move. The S&P steady. The Dow close to so not far away from the cash. So not a big outperformance there. Here are the European indices all bunched up very closely together, correlating with each other, losing some power, and the FTSE down here lost power. Just want to look, to look at this story, how it's evolved. It's one of the things we can do with the RRG graphs on Optima. And let's go back in time. Now, we picked up on this NASDAQ story really at the, in January, um, this dominance. And don't forget, the tech stocks suffered last year a severe sell-off. A big correction in and uh, where they were overvalued and uh, didn't deserve to be where they were that was the dominant theme and then basically at the beginning of the year it changed and I want to just show you historically how that evolved on the on the RG chart the other thing is the Hang Seng if I click on this here now you can see this graph here we had it was very weak on an absolute basis then it had a strong rally and then it's weakened off again and we'll just concentrate on these two because the this was picked up early and really well on ROG so I'm going to go back now in time to I think this is round about January here now this is March so I'll go back a bit further This is February, actually, so still back a little bit further. Okay, so let's just follow the Hang Seng, first of all. So this is the Hang Seng in January. So here it was, this was it bouncing up, coming up through here. And look at the length of the tail in here. This was very rapid change in its fortunes from that downtrend to coming up and moving powerfully forward. And watch it to turn round here and as it topped out the bounce was complete we picked this up very clearly here on RRG so moving forward here now we're at February and then coming down here we move across from leading into a weakening se sector and we did that in March and that was the top in the market and then it turned on down here moving very rapidly with a long tail here purposefully towards the lagging quadrant and where we are now and that is us going through the whole process here of up and then down there now doing the same thing with the nasdaq this is here is the nasdaq and this is a bit early but here it is in January. 
So coming up in here, we had European stocks dominating very much in here. The S&P was lagging at this time here. So it's a different story at the time. But watch from January, the Nasdaq, which was in the tail end of, of the think that the market, was, that whole sector was a bubble burst and it was a new tech bubble of 1999 again, all over again. That was the thinking at that time. But then on a relative basis, we began to see it rise up and had a little bit of a wobble there and then here and the, it shot across into the leading quadrant in March. Now in February we could see it was on its way there heading in the right direction very strongly here and still behind things like the stocks and the DAX but in the right direction whereas there they were beginning to wobble and to turn down which they did here but the Nasdaq off powerfully, longer tail, gaining more power in its message and then to moving on out to where we are now, that point of dominance now. And so that's been the story and this is how you visualise this dominance of the Nasdaq, still the case now, although what has happened now is that the, the direction of the other indices, the US indices, is all northeasterly. And they're also improving. So this is a feature of something which is happening right now. It's we've had on its own, we've had the dominance of the Nasdaq and the other US indices, particularly the Russell, the broad market, looking rather poor. That's changing now. They are catching up. So the other indices, if you like, they, the people were worried because the breadth was too narrow, too much just centred on a few tech stocks. But actually the broad market now is beginning to improve. People say it must top out because the, the breadth isn't there. Actually, the breadth is following and is coming. So that's the new story that we're picking up here now. So here is the Russell 2000 index and a much improved chart here. We've, we have still got a pattern of high, lower high, lower high, lower high and lower high intact here. But we've got low, same low, not yet a double bottom because we haven't broken that apex in between, but now we've got rising lows taking place in here. This low around 16,000 was at this January 2020 high here, which was a support level for it. So it's looking much, much better. And I see here that the weekly MACD is crossing to the upside. So having crossed down here, it's crossing up now. And so much improved there. And the RSI looking very good indeed. So this is much improved. The, we've broken through this little consolidation here. That's a quite a big move we've had in the last two weeks. Up the next resistance level is the 2000 level, the round number and this high here. But it does look as though it's going to push towards it. And so we'll see this catching up of the broad in index, the Russell 2. The S&P 2 looking great again. It's broken out of this triangular consolidation here. What, cleared that stubborn 42,000 level and then that takes us down now up to 43,200 as the next resistance level. I don't think that resistance is very strong and I think that could clear for quite a good move maybe even up to 46 where we meet this resistance here from April but it's April last year and but it's moving up strongly higher lows intact in here moving averages 15,200 50 powering ahead and the 200 also moving up so the gap widening there that's a strengthening long-term message the MACD is positive and the gap is widening too and the RSI is very strong indeed it's a high reading yes but that's because it's very strong look how it, in this move here how we we're always in this high reading area here now. So we've got momentum, we've got from the RSI, we've got the strengthening trend indicated by the MACD crossing to the upside, and we've got weak resistance ahead. So this looks set to do its catching up process with the NASDAQ. In the S&P sectors, we haven't really got a change in the picture here. We've got out on the right hand side here, this is with the weekly sampling, we've got the technology and the communication sector, both right out on the right hand side, holding that position and everything else on the left. So the lead is without doubt, it's coming from those two and the weak 
The two weakest ones are energy and financials. The banks are still weak as well and no change in that part of the structure of the market. And the Nasdaq still powering ahead. We had a pullback week, but it's, it's in the context of what's going on. It's really not much at all. The big break was, of course, the 13,700 break out that released a lot of energy and should could take us to this high at 15,200 here, which is the next resistance. We've got two resistances in there. Then we've got a consolidation resistance from 15,800 up to the high at 16,700 up in there. But we've got energy here. So there's a weekly chart, but we've got the MACD positive and the gap is widening in it. And the RSI powering up tipped down because of this weak week here but it it really overall the trend is extremely strong and it's doubtful that this in it, on its own could be the here is the rrg of the fang plus group and still over on the right hand side are meta and nvidia both had a little bit of cor small correction in the last few days but still by far the strongest and moving like rockets. We'll look at the charts in a moment. We talked we we talked about Amazon last week and and like to look at that and Google too. Tesla is still a drag really on on the group. So we've got they've moved over so that it isn't that it's just Nvidia and Meta that are right of 100 on that JDK RS ratio and everything else is left. They're all they improved a lot. The whole group has improved a lot and so it's not so concentrated on the two but it is still concentrated on those two particular tech stock. Here's Nvidia breaking the high here at 345, powering through it, shooting through it there. A little bit of a pullback in the last couple of weeks in it but it's remarkable that it's held up so well. The trend is undoubtedly strong and the MACD gap widening here, it's continuing to strengthen. This is a rocket that's in stage two, I would say. Here's Amazon that we highlighted, it had, did break that high and uh, powered ahead. And it's clear now, good to support in here, MACD, you can see gap is widening here, getting more energy, RSI powering ahead here and looking forward to getting to the re next resistance point, which is right up here at 145. So we like this one because it had a bit of a clear run. And finally, a word on Google. It broke the resistance level, went to the next resistance, which we noted was very close. The series of lows in here around 125, 126, tried to break through, pull back. This would be a natural place for it to stop if it's going to stop. The, the previous resistance level now becomes a support level. So look at the action here on, on this at this current level. The Bollinger Bands, the, sorry, the MACD is painting a very bullish picture and the RSI has come up strongly, hooked down with the price action here. But will it be a hook down like that one and lift up again? So watch closely the action here. If it holds here, then I think we'll go on up and possibly take out this high and then move on toward into this consolidation area here. But of the two, Amazon, it's a more attractive looking chart because you've got a nice, uh, nice gap, not a literal gap, but not much trading between now and the next level of resistance, which is much higher up, whereas the next level of resistance here is quite close by. Moving to the foreign exchange market. I want to draw your attention because we've been having a strong dollar for several weeks now. And we've seen, for example, the heavyweight euro here suffering from that. But it may be coming to an end this dominance of the dollar and it may be turning and I want to look at where it might be best to participate in this and take advantage of it if this turn is occurring. So here is the euro, the euro falling, the US dollar rising back towards you might say a support level either from this consolidation from March or from this uptrend line here but more importantly the date on the daily chart the MACD has been extremely good in the in the euro and in the dollar itself. So we had this uh, crossover here, so which was a sell here. Then we had the cross here, the MACD crosses signal line right in here at the low. 
and then crossing here and here at the high. It's a kind of slow lagging trend direction indicator. It's not really good for trading because it's got built-in lag. It's made of moving averages, but that gives it a high degree of accuracy. Now, what we have got here is we've had the move down, which was from mid-April till now, and it's close to crossing in here. And we've lost momentum on the downside, and it's starting to look like the euro is bottoming out, or if you like, the US dollar is bottoming out. In the RSI, we can see here that we've got a strongly up moving. It's not actually a bullish divergence, but it's a strong up movement going on in here after being having been pressured since the middle of April as we've made a top. So let's now look at the big picture of this and look at the major currencies versus the US dollar using RG. Now this is a relative rotation graph with a weekly sample. So each dot here is a week. So we're showing one, two, three, four weeks, five weeks of activity. Uh, there's something quite stark here. There's only one currency versus the dollar, which is at the cross here, which is moving in a northeasterly direction. Everything else generally is heading in a southwesterly direction. Westerly means weakening versus the dollar and southerly means without positive momentum. There's one, just one, the Canadian dollar. And here it's moved across in, in the recent weeks from the improving quadrant into the leading quadrant and, and is pointing northeasterly, so easterly, strengthening on a relative basis to the US dollar here and northerly with positive momentum. So it's moving in a lovely direction here. This is on the weekly sample. Let's move to the daily, and here you can see that everything is on the daily chart is, is weaker than the US dollar, which is here, except for the Canadian dollar. Here we've got some bounce, so that's that little, in the as we saw in the euro, the little curving of the euro, this is the curving going on, but the leader is the Canadian dollar. So let's have a look at the Canadian dollar chart. Here is the Canadian dollar. So it's expressed, of course, US dollar, Canadian dollar. So decline here is decline in the US dollar, rise in the Canadian dollar. So bearing in mind the charts we've just been looking at and the position of the Canadian dollar in the RRG chart and the, the position of the US dollar itself at this sort of turning point potentially. And now here's something which where the dollar is already weak in relative terms. So imagine that it goes weaker. So in other words, this goes further down. Now we're at a pretty crucial point here, aren't we? 133 point here, that if that were to give way, we could easily drop a lot further down. Look here. So we got some resistance from this high from July 2022, 132, that high, that low, that breakout point there, that's quite a significant level. But potentially, this is quite vulnerable to a US dollar fall and this one in particular. If you go, if you agree with this idea that we're in the just at the cusp of a change in direction in the, in the euro, in the dollar, sorry, excuse me, and that the dollar, the euro is turning up, the dollar is turning down, having the dollar having dominated, then the euro, yes, there's room for that to go up. But really, the one which has got you will be pushing into pushing into resistance here. But the one that really has got a clear shot of moving substantially is um, is the Canadian dollar. So my view is that if you go along with this, then watch the Canadian dollar, look for the big break on the Canadian dollar potentially, and for that to lead the way as indicated by the ROG weekly and daily graphs. I'll uh, leave it there this week. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you benefit from that. Look at the stock indices and the potential changes that are going on there. We've had some persistence in that area for a while and that may be changing. And then also a potential change in the dollar and how best to participate in that. So thank you very much for watching. We'll be back again next week. It will be Julius next week. So from Julius and I at RRG Research, we wish you the best and may the trend be with you.